Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... Is everybody here aware that just before Jesus comes back, there's going to be a polarizing and everybody is going to be shaken into one of two groups? You're either going to be worshiping the beast in his image or you're going to get the seal of God to be part of his flock. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Today's presentation is an excerpt from the Most Amazing Prophecies video series. How do we find God's true church? You know, I wrote a book called uh, How to Survive in Church. And let me see if I can remember what I wrote. What are the main reasons people pick a church? How do you pick a church? You want to know what the main reasons are that people pick the church that they go to? Let me tell you some of them. It's the church where my family goes. A lot of people go to a church because it just happens to be the church where they grew up. Good enough for grandma and grandpa, good enough for me. Good enough for mom and dad, good enough for me. People pick a church because it's close to the house. Now you think, what does your church believe? I don't know, but it's not very far away. <laughs> You'd be surprised. That looks like a nice church and it's just up the street. What denomination? I've never heard of it before. But it's not very far. Church is a church, right? You'd be surprised how many people don't know what their churches teach. Some people pick the church because they say, the music is great. Why do you go there? Oh, they get the best music program. And I'm in the choir. What do they believe? Not sure, but wow, the strains of music. Woo! That's true. Some people pick a church for the music. And I like a good music program. Some people pick a church because the pastor is charismatic. I know that's why you come to PMC here, right? <laughs> that's the point. Or good looking. You'd be surprised. Some people say, why do you go there? Oh, pastor, he's really something. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not why they go to Sacramento Central. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be surprised. Some people pick a church because of the architecture. Wow, I want to go to that. Look at that building. It's beautiful. The stained glass, the modern design, comfortable pews so I can sleep. <laughs> You'd be surprised. That's why some people pick the church they go to. You know, I heard about a, um, a Russian immigrant. You may have seen this slide on the screen a minute ago. He spent his life in Russia, immigrated to the U.S., and he wanted to fit in. And he said, so what do you eat for breakfast? He asked a friend. He said, well, we eat cereal, most of us. Okay, he went to the market. He said, I'd like to buy some cereal. And uh, he was directed to this aisle as long as an airport terminal, where on both sides was an almost endless variety of cereals. And his mind was swimming. Well, how do you pick it? Because they got it for everybody. They got cereal for kids. They got cartoons and prizes inside. They got cereal for old people that, that promise health benefits. They got cereal that are for yuppies. They got uh, cereal that is fast and some you got to cook. They got sweet cereal. They got natural cereal with no sugar. It tastes like sawdust. They got all kinds of different cereal, right? <laughs> you sell some of that here in town, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm leaving in about a week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, where was I? Oh, yeah. But the devil markets religion the way some of these corporations market cereal. They say, what do the people want? I will give them something for what they want. But what is the only right reason to pick a church? You know how I pick cereal? I read, I don't look at the color of the carton. I don't look at the prize inside or the special offer on the backs or, or some celebrity who's on the cover. I flip right away as I go down the aisle, I want to say, what are the ingredients? If the first ingredient is sugar, I keep looking. A lot of people pick their churches based on the design on the cover. All these extraneous things. Now, is there anything wrong with having a church that has a nice building? Oh, this is a beautiful building. I'm jealous. Is there anything wrong with our, our church? We're looking at a building program right now. Anything wrong with having a church that is a good music program? Wouldn't you prefer that to the option, the other one? It, everyone sings like feeding time at the zoo. 
Isn't it nice to have a church where the pastor is charismatic and he can keep you awake? Isn't it nice to have a church where the, you know, you've got a good children's program? We all want these things. None of those things, it's nice to have the same church your parents happen to go to. It's nice if it's not a thousand miles away. Nothing wrong with those things. None of those are the right reason to pick a church. Want me to tell you the right reason to pick a church? The foundational teachings of that church. Don't you want to go to a church where people are loving and nice? But that's not even the right reason. The foundational teachings, here's the reason, are the teachings of Christ and His Word. That's the reason to pick a church. And if you find that group where the foundational teachings of that body are the teachings of Jesus Christ, that's His church. They might be meeting in a renovated hamburger stand. They may not be able to sing. They may be a little grumpy. They, they might have uh, uncomfortable pews, but it's God's church. Don't be deceived into the marketing plans of the devil to get people to go to church for all the wrong reasons. So how do you find, does God still have a church in the world today? Is everybody here aware that just before Jesus comes back, there's going to be a polarizing and everybody is going to be shaken into one of two groups? You're either going to be worshiping the beast in his image or you're going to get the seal of God to be part of his flock. And I want to say for the record now, I believe that God has his children in many different denominations. Loving, when I first became a Christian, I was not a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, where I am now. I fellowshiped and worshiped with a number of different denominations, and I found godly people that are going to be in heaven in those churches. You know one reason I'm in the church I'm in now? I got tired of going to some churches that said, unless you're a member of this church, you're all lost. When I heard the Seventh-day Adventists say, we believe, matter of fact, in our writings it says, the greatest part of Christ's true followers are in the fellowship of other churches. I said, praise the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone doesn't matter what you believe. There is one truth. And it also means that before Christ comes back, when this polarizing happens, people are going to be pulled together based on biblical truth, not on the prize in the box. So, how do we find out what the true church is? Do we need to know that? Especially when there's so much deception in the last days? Isaiah 8.20 According to the law and the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, there is no light in them. We must go by the law and the testimony. It means the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. The law and the prophets. Number seven. In Revelation 12, God calls his end time church the remnant. What does the word remnant mean? A remnant is a remainder, the residual, the residue, what is left, what has survived. One thing you'll know about the remnant is that when you buy remnant, it will be identical to the original, but it's all that's left. God's church has been under attack by the devil, but he still has a people. You can find through history that God seems to preserve a remnant. During the time of the flood, God had a people before the flood, the children of Seth, the sons of God. But when the sons of God, the children of Seth, saw the daughters of men, the children of Cain, and they began to intermarry, when the children, when God's church began to intermarry with the descendants of Cain, they lost their identity and all the thoughts of their hearts were only evil continually, and they were all destroyed except a remnant, Noah and his family. Then at the Tower of Babel, again, they began to compromise. God saved a remnant from Mesopotamia, Abraham. And then he saved that remnant out of Egypt. Many died in the wilderness, but he saved a remnant out of that group that made it to the promised land. And then unfaithfulness came in again, and God continues to save a remnant. They were carried off to Babylon, but he brought a remnant back. And out of all the people that heard Jesus preach, there was only 120 in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. God continues to save this remnant. It says he's going to have a remnant in the last days that he's going to be going back to the Bible. Number eight, what additional two points does Jesus provide in Revelation 12, 17 to identify his end-time remnant church? 